So today we are gonna dive into the most in-depth, detailed tour of Babcock Ranch that you will probably find anywhere. The whole reason I'm doing this is because I've had so many questions, comments about the other videos that we've done about Babcock Ranch, but people wanna know more. They want more details. So if you're one of those people, if you're considering Babcock Ranch as a place that you might consider moving to, you wanna watch the entire video. So throw me up on the big screen, grab a drink and a snack, sit back and relax. It's gonna be a long video, but it's gonna be worth it. We're gonna cover so much detail. You're gonna wanna watch it. We're checking out the map. I'm gonna show you where everything's at, show you all the different neighborhoods. So let's get into it. So first off, for those of you that have no idea where in the United States we're talking about, it's Florida and Southwest Florida in particular. So we're gonna zoom in on the map here. So Southwest Florida, I typically identify as basically this whole area along the coast. Anything pretty much south of Tampa St. Pete. So that Bradenton, Sarasota area all the way down through Fort Myers to Naples and Marco Island. And as you can see, Babcock Ranch is on the eastern side, but kind of pretty much smack in the middle between Sarasota or Bradenton and the Naples Marco Island area. Pretty much right in the middle, but further inland than areas that most people typically consider. So we're gonna get into why that is important and how that actually makes Babcock Ranch so desirable when typically you would think otherwise because so many people seem to always wanna be right along the coast. So now you can see I've zoomed in a little bit here. And first thing people ask me is, how do you get to Babcock Ranch? How do you get to Southwest Florida? Are there airports? What's it like? How's the access? So first of all, yes, you have two airports very nearby. First of all, you've got the Punta Gorda Airport right in here, and you have the Southwest Florida International Airport, RSW is the airport code in Fort Myers down here. And so pretty close, you can see the Babcock Ranch neighborhood is here where they're developing so far. I know the uh, the pin is up here because that is the actual ranch. Yes, Babcock Ranch is a ranch. It has been a ranch for over a hundred years. It has been basically this entire area pretty much, well, everything on this side of this road here has been a big, most of that area has been Babcock Ranch. The ranch is still there. They just sold off a section of it for this big development, which eventually at some point will probably be its own town. Currently right now it is considered a Punta Gorda address because mail is delivered by the Punta Gorda post office. Uh, that will likely change. It will likely get its own post office at some point and have its own mailing address. So that's where we're at. And up here by the actual ranch, this area here is actually owned by the Babcock Ranch development. That is where the solar fields are. If you have not heard, Babcock Ranch is currently the largest solar powered area, I guess you could say. They, they say town, uh, the largest solar powered town in the United States. All of the solar field here generates enough power to, or at least it will when it's finished, they're building it in phases. And what's there now is large enough to power more than all of the homes that are existing in the current phase of Babcock Ranch. And will, when both the solar fields are done and Babcock Ranch is done, there will be, it will generate enough power to power not just the town of Babcock Ranch, but will actually is, is connected. The land is leased to FPL, uh, Florida Power and Light, which is our electricity provider in the area. And that power goes out to the rest of Southwest Florida as well. Now, the next question a lot of people ask me is how big is Babcock Ranch? So as we zoom in here, you can see currently Babcock Ranch runs right along State Road 31 here. Currently, what they have 
either completed development or in development right now is this here. And in there, so far, there are over 4,000 homes have been sold. Now, there is more development planned, which is going to bring it down somewhere about here, come out here, come back up, and actually, let me show you the master planned map. Now it's too big to fit all on one screen, but you can see what I was drawing there. You got this, you got this, it comes down, it comes out here. Um, so on the map here, actually, I think I came up a little bit too far. It comes along this line here. It has a little bump about here, and then it comes out further and comes up somewhere along here. And it's got a little thing like that. And then comes back around and goes up here. It's all of this area here. And the plan eventually is for 19,500 homes. So 19,000 homes, and it's going to be powered by the solar field up here. So currently, like I said, about 4,000 homes sold. Not all of those are finished and occupied yet, probably somewhere in the ballpark of about 3,000. I think uh, we anticipate over five, probably closer to 6,000 homes sold by the end of maybe the end of 2024. And so somewhere in that ballpark, but eventually 19,500. So we're only, call it roughly 20,000, we're roughly 20% 20 of the way sold out in Babcock. So there's a long ways to go, a lot of land still to develop, and we'll look back at the master plan total development so far. And so basically this village three, this whole orange area, this is considered West Town. The green section here is Midtown, and then the blue section over here is what is referred to as East Town. So currently, West Town is mostly all developed. Uh, they still have these neighborhoods in here that are not developed yet. They're in the process of development and they have not started building yet. This section here, building and sales is started and most everything above you can see. And if we look on this line here, you can kind of see the straight line across here. That is actually the divide. Uh, Charlotte County is to the north and Lee County is to the south. They agreed with Lee County in order to, when they originally bought the land and, and got approval for development, part of the agreement was they were going to pay for widening some roads in Lee County. And they didn't want to shell that money out right away. So they started building in Charlotte County first. So they are funding a big part of the road widening down 31 here. There is also a road widening plan for Bayshore Road here and 31, they're gonna widen this bridge and make uh, easier access to Palm Beach as well. So all of that is in the works now that they have started the development down here in uh, Lee County. So that kind of gives you an idea and we'll go back to their map here so you can see. But this is the plan. There is a the current town center right in here on, uh, on this huge lake. And then there is a new town center in development right in this area here that will be coming in the not too distant future. So the next question people ask me about a lot is how far is Babcock Ranch to the beaches? Well, the reality is it's kind of far, still probably much, much closer than you're used to wherever you're coming from because most people are not coming from areas where they are right near a beach. The closest beaches, I know, yes, there's water all along here, but there are no beaches along there, uh, along Cape Coral and, uh, and Punta Gorda. So the beaches, the closest beaches are gonna be along here. Or, uh, so this is Venice Beach down here, Inglewood, Minnesota Key, 
and down to Boca Grande. And then of course you have the beaches out here, Danabel and Captiva Islands, and Fort Myers Beach, Bonita Beach, Naples beaches, all along here. So those are gonna be your closest beaches. Pretty much no matter which direction you go, it's gonna be 45 minutes to an hour, hour and a half, depending on traffic. That's just what it is. If you wanna be on the beach, you need to be on the beach. Babcock Ranch is probably not your spot if you wanna be on the beach. Although, don't miss, one of the neighborhoods is gonna have a beach. So if that's your thing, it could still be okay. So the next thing that people ask me is Babcock Ranch looks like it's in the middle of nowhere. What is around it, right? What's there? What is there to do? Are there restaurants? Is there shopping? What is there? So let's talk about it. First of all, you've got the original town center here. So this is where they host all the events. There's a ton of stuff. Of course, the big draw and the big idea of Babcock Ranch was building a modern day version of an old fashioned town. So where everybody knows each other, people come together, they gather, they have stuff going on, they have events at the town center, they do food trucks, they have farmer's markets, they host concerts, all kinds of really cool stuff to give you things to do right there in your neighborhood, in your town, without having to go out. You can go out to do the bigger stuff, um, but they have a lot of cool, a lot of fun stuff really right there in the community. So you got the town center there. You've got a couple of restaurants there. You've got the Lake House restaurant and bar. You've got Slater's Goods and Provisions, which is like kind of like your little corner store uh, that you would have in the town. You can get snacks. They've got a, a quick like grab and go food counter. You can buy beer and wine and, and stuff like that. Little quick needs. You just run down there on your golf cart, grab what you need and take off. Then over here, they've got the newer commercial development right here. And as you can see, I've brought up the different restaurants. There is a, an awesome Mexican restaurant. I'm not quite sure how to pronounce it, Mzuma, but super, super good, great food. Pie is your local pizza shop. So you can dip in there, grab a pizza on the way home for dinner. You've got us, of course, the requisite Starbucks and you've got a cool little sushi grill as well. So you've got multiple options there. And in terms of grocery shopping, there is a Publix. Yes, of course, they have their famous deli. So you need sandwiches, stuff like that. Great spot there. And then also here in the town center, you can't go without an ice cream shop, right? So there is scoops there. You can get ice cream, you can get coffee. So you've got the necessities there. You've got the nicer restaurant at the lake house, the Mexican restaurants, casual, uh, pizza places, casual, sushis, casual, grab and go, and then the, the grab and go deli and all that at Publix. So really everything that you need right there. And then if you want a nicer, fancier spot, then you go outside. And there will be a secondary commercial area that is coming along in here, which is going to be the second, uh, the second town center. So that'll be coming along later. In terms of amenities for all of Babcock Ranch, well, let me zoom out here. So you've got the Sunset Park right here, which is fantastic. Incredible sunsets all along right here. You can drive down here. You can catch them on this road or actually. So these are, these are hiking trails. You can wander through here, the park there, like I said, uh, you can wander over along here. But uh, I mean, I've a couple times just been leaving at sunset and stopped along this road here. I mean, you've got this big open lake, so it's an incredible view so you can catch the sunset there. Great spot. 
you have the Lake Timber Lodge right here. And I'm gonna take my marks off and I'm gonna zoom in here so you can see it. You've got a huge community pool, this massive clubhouse, open field, all out here, playground right here. So all along the lake here, all cool spot to hang out. You got a nice covered porch with chairs and stuff out there. The clubhouse here has pool tables, has a bar kitchen area. You can go in and hang out whenever you want as long as it's not reserved uh, and being used for a private event, but awesome. Nice big resort style pool here. You got the, the pool baths. And so everything you need right there, you've got a canoe kayak launch here. You can hang out. Yes, these are boatable lakes. So you can see, I mean, these are, these are some of the biggest lakes. These are not like your typical, you know, what we call Florida lakes that are really just retention ponds. These are legit lakes that you can hop on a boat. You can go cruise around. No, they're not motor boats, but uh, um, any, well, they can be, they can be electric, but just no gas. So canoes, kayaks, electric boats, and then, like I said, over here, you've got the town center, you've got the shops here, shops in here, lake house, and then this is the uh, wellness center. So there is a huge community fitness center that you can use. You've got the lap pool. Uh, you do need to get a private membership for that, but it's super, uh, super inexpensive. And that is all run by Lee Health. You've got a doctor's office in here. So when we, when people ask me about healthcare, you have doctors here, you have physical therapists here. They don't have a hospital, but you've got doctors and everything you need there. And then here you've got a couple covered pavilions. And this is the park area. And then the amphitheater here. So like I said, they have concerts and everything out here. Uh, they do food trucks and food trucks roll up in here. You can wander around, grab, you know, dinner, whatever you want. The farmer's market comes in here on Crescent Loop as well. Um, so just really, really cool. All kinds of activities, stuff going on. You've got another covered area over here. And then this, again, another kayak and boat ramp launch and they even have kayaks and stuff that you can rent. So you don't have to own your own, although you're allowed to, and you can bring it over and use it when you want to. So Sunset Park, we talked about, there are a ton of parks and walking trails and biking trails all throughout. Now on the other side of the town center over here, we have the Cypress Lodge. So here, and we're gonna zoom in and you can see another big resort style pool, a little bit smaller lodge, but also can be used, uh, it's open to the public, can be used, anybody within Babcock Ranch can rent, uh, reserve it for private events, things like that. Uh, you got the big viewing tower over here on the lake, another dock here for fishing, you can, you know, it's on the same lake, so you can pull the boats up there. So, but these, I mean, these lakes are incredible, right? Then, let's see, we have more and more parks. You got Bill Hammond Trail, Trout Creek runs through here. You've got the Hillcrest Park Observation Tower which is currently being developed that, uh, like I said, that's a part of the second phase. And so as they're developing all of that, they're building out this park and it runs all the way down here. There is another park going in right here. And one more down here. So there, and there will be more coming in the future development sections. Then of course, yes, we have seen, there is Babcock National Country Club, which is here. Lennar developed and uh, built course and community. So you've got Babcock National if you are a golfer, and then 
Webb's Reserve is the new golf course that they're developing because Babcock National is just about built and sold out now. So Webb's Reserve is going down in here and there's gonna be another golf course there. So as far as more activities, you've got walking and hiking trails all throughout all of Babcock Ranch. You've got bicycle lanes all throughout, and I think the uh, probably number one preferred mode of transportation throughout Babcock Ranch is golf carts. Golf carts are allowed everywhere, on every road, and throughout all of the communities. So golf carts are super popular, cool thing to cruise around, and you can obviously go out and do some uh, off-road. Uh, if, you've, if you've got one of those custom jacked up lifted golf carts and that sort of thing. You can go out and play in the, uh, the wilderness as well, which you have all around you. Now we've talked about entertainment. We've talked a little bit about healthcare. Now, another thing that is super, super commonly asked about is education. Babcock Ranch, of course, a massively family friendly community. So what is there for schools? Are we gonna have to drive? miles and miles to get our kids to school because Babcock is kind of out there in the middle of nowhere at the moment? Well, the answer, as you can see here on my screen, on our map, is no. This whole area here is Babcock Ranch. You've got Babcock High School here. And I'm gonna take that away and zoom in a little bit more. And the Babcock Neighborhood School is the elementary, middle school age kids go to the neighborhood school, and then they bounce right across the driveway here to the high school. And then this building here, the field house, is the gym and everything for the schools and also serves as an evacuation shelter. So as you can see, there's another park right here. This is Jack Peoples Community Park. And you can see here, you've got bocce ball over here a little covered shaded area there. You've got a big open green space. You've got a full court basketball court, a ton, one, two, three, four times three. So 12 pickleball courts and four tennis courts. So you have all kinds of cool stuff. And what do you know? Even over here, there's a skate park. And not just that, you got a full football field, baseball and softball fields. And I can't remember what they're doing here. This is all under development still. I can't remember if this is gonna be a separate soccer field, but all of this is under development, should be finished very soon now. And yeah, so just so much, everything is just right here. So you've got your schools, You've got your shopping, your grocery shopping, your dining, entertainment. As long as you're into outdoor stuff, you have it here at Babcock. There's just so much going on. So really, really cool. They, they're trying to think of everything, trying to make sure that they have just about everything covered. But now let's zoom out for some other stuff. If you are looking for cool things to do, if you're into the outdoors, you should definitely go check out the ranch itself. Uh, the eco tours are a ton of fun. They take you on a bus, they show you all around the ranch, drive you all through, show you the different animals they've got, uh, because like I said, it is a working ranch. They talk to you a little bit about the, uh, the solar fields and what's going on there. And then right across the street, you do have the Octagon Wildlife Sanctuary as well, if you're into more wild animals and stuff like that. There is some cool stuff there. And then again, if you want more nature preserves, more hiking and stuff outside of the, you know, what they have within Babcock. And it's, it's so cool. I mean, they've got, they've done a great job. They've got nature trails, they've got hiking they're, they're They've got paved trails, they've got dirt trails, they've got boardwalks. You go through the groomed areas, you go through the, the actual nature preserves where it's a little bit more wild and rugged and all that. But if you want even more, you've got down here, you've got the Caloosahatchee Creeks Preserve, which I've hiked a ton of times, love going through that area. You do have to be careful during the summertime because some of those dirt trails do get wet. 
Um, but there's a lot of boardwalk area in there too that's, uh, that's above the ground. So you can do quite a bit of hiking in there and stay dry, but you can go all the way down by the water, by the river there. The uh, campground over here, the Bob James Preserve, Popash Creek Preserve. There's just so much stuff all around here that you can really get into, get some good hiking in. You've got the wildlife management, the Babcock and, and Webb wildlife management area. So there's just a lot of really cool stuff. You got the wilderness adventures here. And then if you want a little bit more tame, but you're into farming and plants and stuff like that, check out this Echo Farms it is really, really cool. We love going in there. There's all kinds of interesting stuff. It's a farm. It's they basically they use this space to develop different growing techniques and test different things out, different types of farming, different types of uh, edible plants and stuff like that that can be used, that can grow in harsher climates to help deal with food shortages in other countries. Africa, they do a lot of work in Africa specifically. Um, so it's, it's really cool to check out. And uh, yeah, so then along Bayshore, like I said, they're in the process of working out the, uh, the plans for widening that, but you've got a few restaurants along here. You've got a couple of new developments. If you're into the rodeo, the Lee County Posse Arena, they've got uh, stuff going on there. And then here at the Lee County Civic Center, they have events, they have, uh, that's where the Lee County Fair is typically held. So all kinds of stuff going on there. Boathouse Tiki Bar, awesome restaurant. You can pull up if you're a boater, you can keep your, they, there's a marina there, so you can keep your boat there if you want. And cool spot, you can eat. They've even got a pool, so you can jump in the pool, hang out at the bar all day if that's your thing. And then right down here is another public shopping center. You got more golf courses. Manatee Park is a fun spot to check out. You can come in, you park, you can wander through, come down here. It is right next to the power plant where they, um, the water that's used to cool the plant is pumped out. So it's warm water. So the manatees, it flows down here into the, the uh, Orange River. So the manatees love hanging out in this area. So you can see them quite often. So that's a cool little place to hang out and check out. And then, yeah, you pop in to downtown Fort Myers. If you're looking for nicer, you know, nicer restaurants and stuff like that, there's a ton of stuff down here. There's events, they do uh, bike night, they do music walk, they do art walk, they got all kinds of cool stuff, lots of shopping and, and fun places to hang out there. Or, like I said, you go north and come up here to the Punta Gorda Historic District. Uh, you got Lashley Park, you got the Fisherman's Village down here. This whole area is a lot of fun to walk and hang out at, you know, weekends you got, uh, or, you know, if you're retired and got nothing to do during the week and you want to just go hang out and drink, you got the Tiki Bar here, kind of similar to uh, the Boathouse, but just a cool, chill little, relaxed, laid back place. One of our favorite hangouts. If you're uh, an Irish pub fan is uh, Celtic Ray here. So if you're into Guinness or, uh, or the Irish whiskey, great place. It's also, they got a great restaurant, good food. So that's a cool spot to go hang out. They got live music a lot, outdoor little pavilion and everything. So that's some of the stuff for you to do, you know, kind of as you spread out. Now, you wanna go to the beaches? We'll take a look, we'll zoom in on the beaches. Your easiest access is to shoot up 75, up here to Venice, you hop off, right here you run down to venice ave and then you come straight through here over the bridge venice beach right there at the end so venice beach is going to be one of them but you can obviously you've got a ton of beaches and i have to zoom out here to show you and mark it, but basically all down here, you can get to any of these beaches all the way down. 
Minnesota Key Beach down here, Blind Pass. There's all the way down here. Don Pedro Island is a cool, but you cannot drive to it. Uh, it's boat access only. And there is, so either you're boating there yourself or you can take the ferry. You can hop on the ferry here, basically Cape Hayes, or you can come down here. There's another ferry that runs from Eldridge Marina. Or if you're driving and you wanna go further south and really get out on island, you can come check out Boca Grande, which is Gasparilla Island. So that is this area right here. And there's a bridge there, so you can drive over. You can come check that out. And then you got Cayo Costa, which is another boat only. And North Captiva, there is a ferry that runs there as well. And then if you're going down, so again, Babcock's out here. You come down this way, you wanna to go to Fort Myers Beach. Fort Myers Beach is here. And then you run down, that's Bonita Beach right in this area. And then this is all Naples. And then you got Sanibel and Captiva right here. You also have Pine Island over here, but there's no beaches there. So if the beach is your thing, this is gonna be your area if you wanna go south. Now, why is Babcock so popular when it's not in the areas where historically people have wanted to live in Southwest Florida. So we're gonna get into that, but real quick, make sure you click the subscribe button. It's been up here, it'll stay up here, but click it now, don't forget, because we are going to do some more in-depth videos on each of the individual neighborhoods within Babcock Ranch. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that if you consider Babcock one of the places you wanna live, you're gonna to wanna to know exactly what to expect from each of these neighborhoods. We're gonna tell you about them in these upcoming videos. So make sure you subscribe so that you get the notifications when we drop those. So why is Babcock such a, such a popular spot? Well, a couple of reasons. Number one, the developers of Babcock Ranch, Kitson, they did such a good job of taking all the different neighborhoods all the different communities that are out there and really looked at what makes certain communities, certain developments and big like town type developments so popular and what makes other developments not very popular. And they really thought through it. They took the best pieces from each of those and combined them into one really incredible town. And basically, what they found, what people want, is they want that old time town feel, uh, but they want all the modern amenities. They want stuff to do, they want places to hang out, they want what is referred to as third spaces, free places that you can go outside of your home or work to relax and just enjoy life. And they provided you with that here in Babcock. They've got parks. They've got preserves, they've got hiking and walking and jogging and biking trails. Free places, the lakes, the town center, the different lodges, they just, they give you places that you're not, I mean, yes, you're paying for them in your association dues, but you pay association dues in almost all these gated communities and they don't have all of that stuff that are outside of Babcock. So really that's one of the big draws. The other draw is as, Mother Nature takes her course and storms continue to get bigger, continue to get stronger, continue to do more damage. As sea levels rise and flooding becomes more and more of a thing, the places to be, you still, people still wanna be in Southwest Florida because they want the warm weather. They wanna be close enough to the beach that they can go there you know, I mean, if you want a beach house, cool. You get a beach house and you deal with the potential issues with being in a beach house. But most people come to Southwest Florida, they want to live, they want to enjoy their life. Their entire life is not the beach. So especially working families, retirees that like to golf, like to play tennis, stuff like that, you don't necessarily have to be on the beach. You can drive to the beach, you can hang out for a half a day or a whole day or whatever, and you can drive back home. 
in an hour, 45 minutes, hour and a half, whatever, you know, depending on where exactly you're at. So the beauty of Babcock Ranch, it's further inland. When these storms do hit Southwest Florida, when you're further inland, once the storm gets over land, the wind speed starts to reduce. So the damage is reduced. So as it moves further inland, by the time it gets all the way over here to Babcock Ranch, the wind speeds are not nearly as bad. It's not gonna do as much damage. It's also elevated. It's a higher elevation above sea level. I mean, all let's face it, all of Florida is not a high elevation, but some areas are higher. And even just being one foot higher than nearby, than the, the other areas nearby, it means that the water has to come up another foot before it affects anything. So throughout the storms that have happened over the last few years while Babcock's being developed, there's been no flooding, there's been very minor damage, wind damage uh, hasn't, you know, I don't, I don't know of anybody, I haven't heard of anybody whose pool cage got ripped off. You know, yes, do you lose a few roof shingles here and there? Sure. But for the most part, very, very minor damage compared to what we have seen in other parts of Southwest Florida. Also, of course, newer homes, just new construction is designed to withstand the higher wind speeds, the stronger storms. So they're newer homes, everything in there. So that's gonna help, but they are built to the strongest wind speed ratings that are currently required, currently available out there. So just very, very well thought out and designed to protect you from wind damage and flooding as well. So all of that was taken into consideration. Like I said, the field house was designed as a hurricane shelter, should it get really, really bad. But basically that's one of the shelters where people are gonna go from other areas where they can't stay in their homes, but the people in Babcock can. And so far through the two major storms that have come through Southwest Florida since Babcock was started, nobody in Babcock lost power. So you don't have to deal with the heat, the no air conditioning, you know, yeah, maybe you want to get a generator, but so far hasn't really been an issue. Didn't even need it. So, you know, maybe you save yourself that expense too. So just some things to think about and why people are flocking to Babcock Ranch. I mean, even people that already live here in Southwest Florida are saying, you know what? I'm getting out of this area. I don't want to deal with the floods. I don't want to deal with the super high wind speeds along the coast. And they're moving over here, moving a little bit inland to Babcock. Now, another question we get asked about all the time is safety and crime rate in the areas. So stick around because we're going to get to that here in a little bit. But first, we're going to talk about, um, we already went into the amenities throughout Babcock that everybody has access to, but we're going to jump into the different neighborhoods specifically within Babcock to show you what each of them has to offer, give you a brief overview uh, so that you can kind of get a feel. Like I said, we're going to do super in-depth videos later on that'll give you really, really detailed information on each community. So this is just gonna be a quick overview of each of them to kind of give you a feel. So maybe you can narrow down and say, you know, okay, I wanna look at these four or these five instead of all of the communities because there are just so many of them within Babcock. All right, so we are taking a look now at the current development map. So this is gonna show basically everything that they have already built and everything that is in the process. And we're gonna start on the, uh, the west side and work our way east, which is exactly the way they started in development. Now, those that are familiar with Babcock, there are four different entrances into the town. You've got Greenway Boulevard up at the very north end by the fire station. You've got Lake Babcock Drive, which is the main entrance, the really nice entrance with the bridge and everything as you're coming in. That was the first entrance that they built uh, you got Cypress Parkway, which is the newer one where the shopping and Publix and everything is. And then the newest is this one down south here, which is basically the one that accesses Terra Walk at this point. It's been a minute since I've been in there down at this end, but I don't think it even really goes past probably this intersection yet. Or if they are, it's just for working on development over in these areas here. So we might as well just start down at the south since that's where we are. 
This is one of the newest communities, Tarawak by Devasta. It is a fantastic neighborhood, not age restricted. Devasta does do all age communities, a great neighborhood. I've got a couple of clients that live in here already. Uh, they're loving it. Devasta, for those that don't know, is a Pulte community. They do typically very highly amenitized communities. So as you can see, clubhouse, tennis and pickleball courts, really, really nice community pool and everything overlooking the lake. Little bit higher end price range, but not custom home prices. There is a lot of flexibility and uh, modifications that you can make with Devasta in terms of features inside the home. So you can go from their, uh, their standard package all the way up and, and load the house up. So there's a lot of opportunity there and it's very early in construction. So there's still some pretty good deals to be had and lots of options in terms of home sites and everything. Then as you can see, there's a lot of future development. This pink area is future mixed use, all of this. Uh, so mixed use typically is a combination commercial and residential. And then you've got the shopping center here, the shops at Yellow Pine and Crescent B Commons. All of Crescent B is already built out. Shops is in development, so there's more shopping coming. And then off of this Cypress Parkway, you've got the new fire station being built. So that's coming as well. Flatwoods is, if you watch, that is one of the communities we talk about in our top neighborhoods in Babcock. Flatwoods is a single family home rental neighborhood. Those homes are owned by a company and they rent them out. So if you're looking to be able to rent in Babcock rather than buy something and you want a single family home, they're pet friendly, nice little houses, not a bad deal. And then just north of that, you have the Canopy Apartments. If you're looking rental apartments, those are nice as well. They've got their own little community pool, great views overlooking the North Lake Bullhorn there. And then right across from that is Town Walk, which is another interesting community that uh, you don't see a whole lot of. It's a specifically a townhome community and you are right there next to Founders Square just about. I mean, you've got B Street here, which is gonna be coming in which is a, a mixed use neighborhood, which that means there's gonna be more commercial right there. So you're gonna be within like right next door to that as well as super easy walking distance to Founder Square. And then just north of that, you've got Lake Timber, which is built on the 80 plus acre Lake Timber and the Lake Timber Lodge. And there's a couple smaller lakes in there as well. These are mostly custom homes. Pulte does still have a few home sites left in here, I believe, uh, but primarily there's just a couple of custom homes left, but Pulte built some and the big custom homes are pretty much what's left in there. You're starting at a million dollars plus, but they've got some incredible views on, on Lake Timber. Then you've got Edgewater by Pulte, which is completely built out and sold out. There are some existing home sales available in there. But Edgewater is one, uh, oh, and Lake Timber, it's not gated. No real amenities to speak of, just beautiful homes with great, mostly water views. This was the first section that was started in the, the community. So it was all custom builders. There's some really interesting plans, some kind of old Florida style homes and stuff like that. So it's kind of cool, but no gates, no amenities specific to that particular neighborhood. Then, like I was saying, we jump over to Edgewater now and Edgewater is built and sold out. It was a Pulte community. Basically, this was designed great views, both on Lake Timber and this lake up here, which does not have a name, surprisingly, uh, at least not on this map. And I can't remember what it was if there was one, but fantastic views, uh, just a small little cabana and pool in terms of amenities, basically just designed to be pretty affordable living with really nice views. So next up we have Willow Green here, which is being built Lennar slash WCI, the same company. This is a small coach home neighborhood. So these are basically four unit larger condos, four units to a building and downstairs, they're both setups are three bed, two bath. Uh, the downstairs units are typically in the 1700 square foot range and the upstairs are uh, a little over 2000 square feet typically. Great floor plans. I really like their coach homes. They are 
you know, big enough to live like a single family home, but they're still completely maintenance free like a typical condo. Really, really well built, kind of like living in a bunker. So they're super quiet, very energy efficient. And yeah, just, I really like those. So if you're looking for something a little bit larger that still has that total maintenance free living, that would be a good option. Waterview Landing is a Toll Brothers neighborhood that they are just about finished with. Incredible views, no real amenities to speak of, but it is gated. Uh, it's got a little gate here at the entrance, just one loop. These outside home sites are just ridiculous views on the lake, if that's what you're looking for. And Toll Brothers is a higher end luxury, large national builder. So they're not like true custom, but they're kind of like in between custom and, you know, little nicer, higher end finishes than Lennar, D.R. Horton, Pulte, those more mainstream, typical builders. Then as you move north here, you've got Edgewater Shores. That is another Pulte community, kind of the sister of Edgewater that they picked up and did this little loop here. Again, no real amenities, just a quiet little gated community, some nice views, and a little bit lower price range than what you got with Waterview Landing, being that they're the Pulte homes. Then you've got Northridge up here, which is a larger Pulte community. And they've got uh, still some homes available in here. Northridge is a little bit different series of homes, uh, lots of two-story homes. So this is more of a real like family oriented, but designed to be a pretty affordable family oriented living. So lots of bigger two-story homes, low fees, not a whole lot of amenities, keep the cost down, but give you a lot of home for the money is really the plan there. And you know, you've got, like we said, all the, the Babcock Ranch amenities so you don't necessarily need all of the amenities there. Then as we move down the street here, we have Babcock National. And this is just about finished, sold out. They've still got a few homes left, but Babcock National, you've got the choice of either golf or non-golf. It is a true full country club style neighborhood. So you've got multiple different types of condos, multiple different types of single family homes. So you've got their four story condo buildings, which are gonna be your smaller units, mostly two bedrooms. Some are, are two in a den or three. They all have two bathrooms. The buildings have elevators. You've got covered parking, but it's parking lot. And then they've got their next step up, which is their two story condo buildings, a little bit larger condos, what they call the verandas. Uh, they each come with a one car detached garage. Then they have the coach homes, which we talked about in Willow Green. They offer those in Babcock National as well, which are those larger condos. All of them have two car garages. They're all three bedroom, two bath, uh, really, really nice high end condos. And then you've got the single family homes up to their state home series, which are really nice big homes. Pretty much everything overlooks either the water or the golf course or both. There are some back here that are on the preserve, but uh, really very pretty much nothing that backs up to other homes. So it's really nice set up there. They're bundled. So you are either getting a social membership or you go for the uh, little bit higher fee, which gives you the full country club membership, uh, full golf membership, and you have a choice based on the homes you pick. So there are certain sections of the neighborhood where they are golf homes and other sections where they are social membership homes. So we can walk you through that if that's something that you're looking for. And then you've got this little enclave over here, the Preserve by DR Horton. And the preserve is a, an attached villa community, basically one floor plan. They're just paired mirror image side by side villas. Again, these are kind of something that are going to live like a single family home, but they are technically attached with one shared wall in between them. Nice little villas. They're 15, 1600 square feet, have a two car garage. So nice setup there. And then we're going to work our way down. Next, we have Lake Babcock, which again, mostly custom homes. There are some back in here that are not the custom homes, 
And so there's kind of a mix. It's again, not a gated community. Uh, the road kind of cuts through here. And these are the, the super high end, big custom homes with just incredible views on this 300 plus acre Lake Babcock. Then as we come back south, here we have future residential development, this small little section here and here. My guess is those are gonna be condos, something like that. Um, then you've got the park and the Babcock Neighborhood School right here. This is the Cypress Lodge. So this Lake Babcock has excellent access to the Cypress Lodge and the pool there. And then of course the school, the uh, sports fields and all of that. And then down here is Parkside, which is another great little neighborhood, super easy access to Founder Square. This is one of the first developments that was started as well, once they brought in the more uh, mainstream builders. So Pulte and Lennar, when they came in, Pulte did Parkside was the first neighborhood they did. And uh, Lennar did Trails Edge here. And so these are again, already completed, sold out. It would just be existing resale homes in here, but Pulte's got some nice homes over here and Trails Edge is Lennar's most common series of homes, the Executive and the Manor series, as well as some twin villas. So kind of Lennar's version of what we were talking about up at Preserve that DR Horton's doing there. And then the last neighborhood that's done or in the process open for sales, but this one particular is done, is Crescent Grove that Meritage Homes built. I know we haven't talked about them yet. They're another production style builder, kind of like Lennar and Pulte. They do things a little bit differently. They do uh, spray foam insulation on all of their homes. So a little bit different than the, uh, the blown insulation that Lennar and Pulte use which is supposed to make it much more energy efficient and sealed up tighter. So a little bit lower maintenance costs and that sort of thing, but similar to Lennar in terms of there's not a ton of options and upgrades and that sort of thing that you can do with them. So just keep that in mind. And again, Crescent Grove is finished, is gated. There's no real amenities there. Another one of those just uh, same with Trails Edge and Parkside. They're just really designed to be affordable, family friendly neighborhoods just trying to keep the costs as low as possible and enjoy the amenities that Babcock in general has to offer. So you see there's a little more future still to come. We talked about that. And then we're gonna move over to Midtown. So here in Midtown, we're gonna start down at the South End. There's some stuff that is still future, still coming. There's a future park over here. We got Palmetto Park down here and Palmetto Landing is the first neighborhood on the south side. So that's here, this whole area right here. And it backs up to Creekside Run just a little bit on these homes here. But DR Horton's building this one and it is gonna be single family and the attached villas. And then they've got the little amenity center here. So it's gonna be gated. It's gonna have its own private amenities clubhouse, community pool, some basic stuff like that. Then next up, we have Creekside Run, which is gonna come through here, and it is all of this. And so Creekside Run is not gated. Christopher Allen is the builder. Great builder, they've done a, a fantastic job. They don't do a ton of neighborhoods at least in southwest florida like this like deed restricted neighborhoods they do a lot of uh they've done a lot of building in like cape coral and that sort of thing where it's just basically they build on lots all over the place but they're a super quality really affordable builder they tend to be a little bit less expensive even than uh dr horton pulte lennar all of that and but they do a nice job they build a quality home uh, there's really no amenities here other than a small playground in the center of the community. So that's going to be a nice, really affordable neighborhood there. And then as we move north again, you have Verde by Pulte. This is going to be pretty similar to Parkside, where 
nice affordable homes. There's a small little community pool there. It is gated. So you've got a little bit more than Parkside has in terms of amenities, it's gate, small pool and that sort of thing. But otherwise, again, it's it's more of Pulte's typical, uh, traditional, you know, gated mid-range homes. Then we move just up the street to Crescent Lakes, which is Meritage. It is their version. So like we said, Verity is Pulte's kind of typical meat of the market, mid-range homes, Meritage doing the same thing here in Crescent Lakes. Little clubhouse, community pool, basketball court, that sort of thing. It is gated again and all single family homes. So you've got your choice of, you know, for these kind of mid-range options, there's a couple different neighborhoods, lots of different opportunity and different builders to choose from. Next, backing up to Crescent Lakes is the next installment from Toll Brothers, Regency, which is a little bit different than uh, the other uh, Waterview Landing over in uh, Westtown. Regency is currently the only 55 and over neighborhood in Babcock Ranch, so it is age restricted. So everyone living in the home has to be over 18. At least one of the occupants has to be 55 or older. Super, super nice high end luxury homes, beautiful models, which you will see in our video. Like I said, we talk about we're doing that next series where we're going to go through and talk about all of the, uh, the different neighborhoods. We've got video of all the model homes for Regency and they are incredible, really, really nicely done. So fantastic amenities, really nice clubhouse, community pool, event center, lots of really good stuff. So similar kind of on par amenities to like Parawalk has or will have. So really nice there. And then just north of that, the Sanctuary by William Ryan. Another one of those kind of mid-range builders. They are a little bit more customizable, not as large of a builder nationally as like uh, Lennar, Pulte, DR Horton, them, but still very large builder, but they offer a, a little bit more customization and that sort of thing. So they're building the sanctuary, which is another gated community. You've got the amenity center coming basically community pool clubhouse. I don't know all the details they weren't in yet on exactly what was going to be there, but definitely a pool and uh, definitely some sort of clubhouse and all that. So, and then right across the street, as you saw, we were coming up, you may have seen or not seen. We got Bluebird Park, Hillcrest Park, the Lagoon Explorers Parks. There's just all kinds of parks up and down here. And then all the way at the north end here, hold on, let me move. We have this that's so big that it takes up more than what I can even show you on the screen. There's two neighborhoods here you have on. So the entrance is going to come in here. On this side is Webb's Reserve, which is the newest country club that Lennar is building. So they finished up Babcock National. And if you know anything about Lennar in Southwest Florida, they pretty much cannot build anywhere without building a country club there. And when they finish one, they've got to get another one started. So they do this all up and down Southwest Florida. So yeah, they got Babcock National just about finished. And so they've got Webb's Reserve started up. They've already got homes built in there and they're actively selling as well. So to the right is Webb's Reserve. Just incredible amenities expected to be coming in here. Uh, they really took the country club approach and just stepped it up to a whole nother level. Again, you're going to have all the different series of homes available. So you're going to have condos, you're going to have the coach homes, the single family homes, and there may or may not be villas in there. And then right next to it is going to be a beast, which actually let me move the screen so you can see how much space this neighborhood's gonna cover. So this is Tucker's Cove, which is something that I've never seen Lennar do before. This is basically the family version of a country club. There's a water park here 
in the amenity center. So yes, there's gonna be tennis courts. Yes, there's gonna be pickleball, I'm sure. Just incredible clubhouse. It is all pirate ship themed. So the clubhouse is a giant pirate ship beached on land. And if you remember back early in the video when we were talking about access to the beach, if you don't wanna to have to drive all the way to Fort Myers Beach or all the way to Venice Beach, you want a beach in your backyard, but you don't want the storm risks of having to worry about hurricanes and that sort of thing, washing your beachfront home away. Well, you could buy here in Tucker's Cove and have a beach right at your clubhouse that you can walk to, you can golf cart to, you can ride your bike to, sports fields, just everything's gonna be right in here in Tucker's Cove. So this is an incredible community to check out. Yes, it is definitely on the pricier side for a family oriented community, but if you've got the money and you want the amenities, I don't know that you can find a community that's gonna have higher end, nicer amenities than this in a, a family oriented community. So that's definitely one that, uh, that you're gonna wanna check out. And again, all different kinds of homes. They got townhouses that are going in here in the, the center. And then the single family homes will branch out around it. So that's what you're looking at. And that in a nutshell is, I'm just going back to make sure I didn't miss anything. But yeah, that is all of the neighborhoods. We just touched on every single neighborhood that is either already completed or under construction that we have any details about so far. As you can see, obviously there's a ton of future residential, future commercial, future mixed use still to be built out. Like we said, 19,500 homes is what it is scheduled for when it's all said and done. And there's only somewhere between four and 5,000 that are sold so far, maybe running over 5,000. We might even be up into close to 6,000 range by now, um, since it is the end of the year, you know, we're getting towards the end of the year, almost the end of September when we're shooting this but there's still a long ways to go as you can see and there is even potentially room to do some more stuff that they don't have platted yet so yeah that's it for the neighborhoods now let's jump into a few other details all right so next up we are going to talk about the traffic uh traffic has been one of the big questions it's been a big complaint all over social media and everything in Southwest Florida. So we get a lot of questions about it when people are asking about Babcock Ranch specifically. So back to the map here, you can see this is Babcock Ranch here. And so you've got State Road 31 that runs down here and then Bayshore Road that cuts over to I-75 here or Palm Beach Boulevard that cuts down this way or you can go north up to Punta Gorda. So most people are going west because that takes you into Fort Myers or into Punta Gorda. Out east, unless you're going across the state to the east coast, there's basically, it's a lot of rural land and then out to Lake Okeechobee. So there's not a whole lot of people going that direction, but traffic is fine for now. It's not terrible, it's not great. They are trying to get ahead of it. They already have the plans in place. They've already made the decisions on widening State Road 31, so that is in the works. Uh, they've got the plans all drawn up, it's been approved. So 31 is going to be widened. Right now it's a one lane each direction. It will be widened to at least two lanes each direction. And same with Bayshore is one lane each direction. They're widening, uh, they are in the developmental phase. They're drawing up plans. I believe they now have had the meeting to discuss with the public the three different options they're considering. So they're in the decision-making phase on that to decide which option they're gonna go with and then start the planning process and uh, permitting and everything to get it ready to go. So that'll be happening. And Palm Beach Boulevard has already been widened a while back all the way into I-75. So there's no issues there. So if you're headed south, unless you need to take Bayshore Road over for some reason, I always recommend popping down to Palm Beach, unless of course this is a drawbridge here. If the bridge is up, then uh, you're gonna wanna take Bayshore and it's gonna get backed up because everyone's gonna take Bayshore. But otherwise, traffic out here for Babcock is not too bad right now. 
Of course, like we've said, there's roughly around 4,000 homes occupied in there right now. It's gonna be somewhere between 19 and 20,000 when it's finished probably. So they're working in advance to get it prepared so that the traffic does not get crazy. So that's a really nice situation there. Now, as you get into Southwest Florida, of course, things get a little different. Once you get into Fort Myers, traffic in here on your major roads, Colonial, Palm Beach Boulevard, Daniels Parkway, yes, there's gonna be traffic. US 41, yes, there's gonna be traffic. 75 during rush hour, yes, there's gonna be traffic. But out by Babcock, it's not too bad, shouldn't be bad. And even in uh, into Punta Gorda, you're going that direction, so you come up, again, come up 31 here, shoot across Vermont, and then getting into Punta Gorda, traffic's not bad. Port Charlotte, traffic's not bad. But once you get up further north and you get into, uh, if you're on 41 during the busy hours, yes, that's gonna be rough. Getting up into Venice and Sarasota, it gets backed up again. So just depends on where you're going, where you're headed and all that good stuff, but traffic from Babcock is not too bad. Next, and that thing that I promised we would talk about is the crime stats. Now, the reason realtors not really keen on getting into this is because we can be considered steering. That's why most of us won't talk to you about it, but we're allowed to present to you information provided by third parties that is public information. So I will show you what they say. This is not my opinion. This is coming from some of the websites that I recommend people check out when you're curious about the crime stats, of course. County Sheriff's Department or City Police Department, depending on whether it's in a city or a county, are great places to look at to see the types of crime and all that good stuff. These websites compile that information from the different police departments and put it in typically an easier to read and understand format. So a couple that I look at, Neighborhood Scout, Area Vibes, those are pretty popular websites that compile a lot of this information. Um, they give you a lot of other good information, like you can see across here, schools, economics, demographics, and all that stuff. But one of the reasons I look at them is for crime stats for, you know, for myself when I'm looking to move or invest or whatever. So I recommend them to my clients as well. So Neighborhood Scout, when you type in Babcock Ranch, pulls the Punta Gorda information, whereas Area Vibes pulls North Fort Myers. And since it straddles Lee and Charlotte County and is a kind of combination Punta Gorda slash North Fort Myers, it, it works. So we can show you both of them. Punta Gorda area here, and then out here to Babcock Ranch, you can see Neighborhood Scout uses blue. The lightest blue is the what they consider the safest, the darkest blue being the most dangerous. So you can see Babcock Ranch here, super, super light blue. They say it's super safe. Area vibes, like we said, uses red, same thing. Darkest red, high. Lowest, lightest red is the safest or low crime rate. And here is Babcock Ranch, all super, super light. Lightest color that they use. And as we zoom out here, you can see what area vibes because it goes all the way up and shows the entire area. It overlays and matches exactly, other than the color that they use, uh, exactly with Neighborhood Scout, that this whole area here is super, super safe. So there you go. You wanted to know about crime. You want to know about traffic. You got it. So if this helps, you want to see some more information, some of our other neighborhood tours and stuff like that, check out these other videos. And if you are ready to start exploring your new home in Babcock Ranch, give us a call.